eco design and interface is about designing systems. So there's there's an element that is product design. So we've looked at, you know, are there components that we don't need? A lot of our early wins were just reducing the amount of material we use to make the same product. Uh, so eco design can be as simple as as the product level, but if you're just doing product design, you're not really doing eco design. You have to design the system. You have to be thinking about what is our production system, so immediately in the factory, and is that, is that an ecological design? Because you can't really produce a green product out of a brown factory. And then you have to look at a lot of your impact is actually upstream from you. You don't control how your materials are made. Similarly, looking downstream, you have to look at, you know, where does this product go? You know, how does it get there? So then the customer, how does the inter customer interact with the product? Is that sustainable? What is the maintenance regime for the product? Then the key question becomes what happens at the end of its life? Does it go, just go in the landfill? Um, how long does it last um, before it gets disposed of? And can, you, can someone, can you or someone else use it again? So that's the system. And unless you're designing at the system level, it's not really eco-design. If there's any point at which you say, it's not really our responsibility anymore, you've kind of, you've dropped out a part of the system. You, you have to be committed to redesigning the system if you really want to do eco-design. When we started looking at how do we you know, make our product more environmentally responsible, after Ray Anderson had his epiphany, he had this sort of ethical, moral urge to do better, but he needed definitions for how to do better. Um, so when we started looking at and sort of analyzing what matters, we started decreasing the weight. If we're using less stuff, that's better for the earth. So we could take weight out of the backing, which is where most of the weight was. Then we started to do deeper analysis using life cycle assessment. We started to realize that even though the backing weighed much more than the face fiber, the part you walk on, which is made of nylon, it takes so much energy in the life cycle to produce nylon that that is actually way more important. So unless we could affect how nylon was made, we couldn't dramatically lower the footprint of our product. Uh, so this took years of engaging with our suppliers. We essentially laid it out for them in the late 90s and said, whoever can figure out how to get us a lower footprint nylon or a high performing other plastic, uh, you're going to get more of our business. And we weren't a big enough customer that they were going to drop everything for us. But there was one company out of, the, out of our suppliers who was a very small supplier at that point, a European based company called Aquafil. There, a guy who was then mid-level in the company went to this meeting and came back and said, these guys have a whole new way to do business. This is very consistent with our company ethos. We got to get on board with this. And they'll be a big customer if we can figure this out. So they, had kinda, they knew they had a customer if they could figure out how to reduce the footprint of nylon. Our other, our other big nylon supplier essentially dropped off the map. They lost all of our business over time. Um, they got, have a little bit back, but it's really was a sort of case study of you know creating the incentive in the supply chain and letting them organize themselves. And what has happened is a, another supplier came up and said, you know, I know they say it's impossible to recycle this kind of nylon, but we'll try it. And they got some of our business. And then eventually Aquafil comes back, and 12 years later, they can give us nylon that does no connection to oil. It's all either from textile waste, carpet waste, and now from fishing nets. So any kind of nylon six waste, they went and invested in the, the multi-billion dollar plant that can take any kind of nylon waste and regenerate it into um, indistinguishable from virgin nylon. That's, that's really the application of eco-design, is if you can change the system, then all these benefits start to come out of it. And now we can source fishing nets, which um, we've been sending them back carpet um, fluff, but now we can source fishing nets. We're developing a village scale program or villagers in, in areas where they're really dependent on fishing and generate a lot of nylon six fishing nets. We will buy those back, provide much needed income for the community, set up community banking, um, and then that goes back and becomes more nylon. And it's such a valuable material that that still makes sense, even if we collect it. We're in 26 villages in the Philippines. Um, and the carbon footprint is so high to make virgin nylon that even if you ship it from the Philippines to Europe back to the US, still less than half the carbon footprint of virgin nylon. So you can tell, you know, you know, good news, bad news. Nylon is a really difficult, high carbon footprint product, but it's really easy to improve on it. And if you can produce all of these other local um, and global benefits, you know, while you're improving on it, you know, so much the better. Before you go and invest in something, 
you want to know, especially for a company that's mission driven like ours, is this going to, you don't want to spend a billion dollars and realize that you just locked yourself into an uh, increased carbon footprint and for the life of whatever that capital asset is. So w whenever we go and, and change a process, whenever we change an ingredient, whenever we change something in our supply chain, we will model that with life cycle assessment to figure out whether we're moving in the right direction, at least for the things that life cycle assessment measures well, particularly good on carbon, but water, you know, emissions. Um, I think the exciting thing about life cycle assessment is it can allow you to focus on what matters. And in our case, it showed us nylon. When we did these early assessments, you're like, wow, we can do all we want with the backing, and if we don't touch the nylon, it's not gonna matter. But wow, that is a water, chemical, and energy intensive process. So if we really wanna be doing eco design, we have to take responsibility for that too. And life cycle assessment shows you, you can't do everything, so where should you focus your efforts? 